nine days in a row that put in days that are higher than the previous low. Super duper bullish. And now we're building above this whole channel here, above this whole 950 breakout. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody and welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trading.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a wonderful weekend. Hope everybody had uh, a good uh, trading week. So let's talk about the tape. Um, we went back, right? We went back a couple of weeks ago. We started talking about, in case you're a first time uh, viewer, thank you for watching, thank you for listening. Um, but we talked about a couple of weeks ago, like what would get this market to stop, right? We had $100 oil, we had uh, a war uh, going on uh, in the Ukraine, right? A lot of geopolitical talk. We had obviously continuous living with uh, the COVID virus, although uh, it doesn't feel like it, we have it anymore, which is a, which is a good thing. And life uh, kind of went back uh, to normal. And the, the answer to the, all those questions was what was going to make the market stop was the market learning to deal with reality, right? Um, and when you look at last week's rally, the NASDAQ rallied 8%, okay? It was the same environment. We still had $100 oil. We still had the coronavirus. We still had the war in, um, in, in the Ukraine. And the most important part of all that equation was exactly what we talked about for a long, long time. The market stopped selling because everybody realized this is just part of life. The same way the market stopped selling when we realized in May 2020, well, we were in a pandemic, right? And after the worst uh, month in the history of the universe, right? April of 2020 was the best month in the history of the universe because people realize and traders realize and economists realize and everybody realize this is just a part of life. And that's where we are right now. So nothing materialistically has changed. Uh, the only difference is people have realized in the last two weeks that this is all part of life and going forward, this is going to be a part of life until there is no more Corona, all goes back to normal uh, prices and the war in the Ukraine stops. And that's kind of where we are. And that's the most important part. So nothing materialistically has changed. Life just went on. And that's exactly what happened. So after yes, uh, last week's, uh, two weeks ago's 8% uh, rally in the NASDAQ, well, what was going to happen this week? And we started continuously going higher and going higher and going higher. And it wasn't a dramatic rise like we saw the previous week. And matter of fact, if you look at the scoreboard, you just see the Dow pretty much flat, uh, eked out about a half a percent. NASDAQ and S&P uh, closed pretty, pretty strong, up 2% for the week. But it wasn't like last week. But the point is, again, the market continues to engulf and embrace where we are, the normal reality, and this is where we are here. And this has so far been a really aggressive rally uh, led by uh, the semiconductors. You can see really, really strong move. Uh, all the beta names had pretty exaggerated moves. And the most important part is like we always talk about what happens next, right? It's, it's not what happened, it's what happens next. And here we are in a very, very uh, important level uh, that we tested several times uh, this week towards the latter part of the week. And now the question is, do we finally get above this channel here and start attacking the 200 day moving average where we got rejected off of that headline of Google, right? Google uh, coming out with that 24 one split. Or do we roll over, finally take down the five day moving average, take down this whole channel here and start moving back to the lows? That is to be determined. This is, a, again, this is a very unbiased broadcast. I, I don't care which way the market goes, up, down, sideways, left, right, or indifferent. The point is we're trying to figure it out together. And Friday session, uh, Thursday into Friday session, there was a tremendous amount of value going into the session. If you guys watched uh, Thursday's video, semiconductors looked great. Tesla was consolidating. Uh, this one was consolidating. That was consolidating. And we had a res day. And that's a very, very important part of any type of market structure. Because again, if you've been watching this video, there's something we, we talk about all the time, too far, too fast, too much, too fast. That's the last thing you wanna do. You wanna see move, consolidation, move, consolidation, move, consolidation. Again, you wanna be prepared uh, for the research, prepared for potential moves. But the most important part is go, rest, go, rest, go, 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 go. And hopefully your stock 
uh, becomes parabolic and obviously life is very, very good after that. So it's very, very important what we have here. Is anything materialistically going to change? Uh, probably by the time you watch this broadcast, whether it's uh, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, or even Monday morning, uh, right ahead of the, the trading day, right? Anything's possible. You could have a headline come out at uh, any given time that's going to escalate fear or escalate euphoria or something in between or something that just doesn't make any materialistic sense. And the market is just going to have to trade on its own merits. And that's fine as well. Those are the best type of markets. But if you, if you watch how the market has aggressively went up, right? Uh, it's been really, really fun if you are a long bias trader and especially a long bias trader and you looked at the facts, right? You looked at the intermediate levels that we took over in the last two weeks, including the five day moving average, which is the shortest term sentiment, which is the 10 day moving average, the birth of the trade, the first close over 20 day supply, which we couldn't do, uh, which we couldn't do since, well, all the way back to January 4th. And now we are right over here looking at this last supply zone before we go back to the 200 day moving average. And these moves have been aggressive. If you watched uh, how big the moves have been off the bottom, incredible. I mean, look, look at Amazon. Amazon has gone from 2,600 to 3,300. Uh, Tesla, which was definitely the move of the week, uh, at least for me, at least for so many of us. Uh, Tesla has gone from the bottom channel here from 755 took out this 950 level here and is resting itself. And if you do a lot of research this this morning or over the weekend, and again, weekends are really kind of to solidify your opinion, kind of sentiment, uh, at least for the Monday session, you're going to see a lot of the same common denominator. Stocks had very, very big runs and now they are resting. And that's the key, right? When we talked about too far, too fast is no good, right? We want, again, we want a good move, consolidation remember the longer consolidation the longer the distribution the higher probability that we are going to resume again and the key area for the queues going into this week right is making sure that we don't give up this whole five-day moving average and definitely especially not give up uh this 50-day moving average so any close continues to build over this 349, 350 level on the 50 day moving average, it has to be deemed at least by biased, right? Once they lose that uh, 50 day moving average, then again, we have a whole different conversation. And again, obviously a lot of room back to the downside, but again, we're trying to put uh, a no bias, um, kind of kind of uh, research on the table so that everybody kind of makes sure that we're looking at the market the same way that there is no guessing, there is no trying to cute uh, the trade the other way. It's all about data. And if you look at the NASDAQ 100, uh, you'll notice one thing over and over again. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days in a row of higher lows, which is super duper bullish. Even the days that we rested, even the days that we had an inverted hammer, the most impressive part was the next day didn't take out the previous low. And even if your stock put in a very structural res day, it's still to be deemed bullish. And if you look at the biggest movers, right? And, and again, I'm not going to go through every single chart, but if, if you look at the strongest names kind of setting up, and, I, and again, I'm just using, uh, you know, I'm just using, you know, the stocks that I, that I follow. Look at Amazon, right? Again, especially going into this week, Amazon had a big, big, big run. They tried to sell it off. It reclaimed the five-day moving average, put in a, a higher low of the previous day. You could see how, how close this thing is reclaiming the 200-day moving average. That is bullish, right? That is super duper bullish. So any close on Amazon above the 200-day moving average starts a pretty impressive move, assuming the market doesn't die. Uh, you look at a name, for example, like Tesla, right? Which is my favorite stock to trade. It doesn't make a difference to me if it's long, short, because the stock has such a an aggressive average true range. You could do very, very well. Um, and look how you know. Look how good and constructive the move has been. It's been a really aggressive move and the same thing kind of mirroring the NASDAQ 100. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days in a row that put in days that are higher than the previous low. Super duper bullish. And now we're building above this whole channel here, above this whole 950 breakout. Would it be great to see Tesla kind of come down to the rising five day? I I, I think it would, okay? I, I definitely think it would be more structural. And, and I understand we're kind of in the, I want it now generation. I, you know, I need it now. I need the instant gratification. But it, there's something to a stock coming back testing the rising five minute support, trapping more eager additional shorts 
and fueling the fire back to the next leg up. But you kind of see the consolidation now, right? You kind of see it go sideways for a couple of days. It's gotten rejected off the previous day's channel now, back to back days. And if you look at the 60 minute view, look how tight this thing is going. And the key, for example, like an Amazon or a Tesla going into this week, we wanna see the, resum the resumption of those deep out of the money short-term expiration, violent option players coming back in the market. So again, if you Monday morning, you start to, you know looking at, at the tape and they start coming for the 1100s, the 1120 weeklies, you know it's a matter of time. If they come in you know, for Amazon, if they start coming in for the 3400 weeklies, the 3450 weeklies, you can see the next supply zone, you know it's just a matter of time. And names just like Microsoft are ready to go, right? Ready to go here, res day on Friday, but just it, this thing is ready to go. You look at Lamb Research, right? Lamb Research, very, very close to reclaiming the 50 day moving average. You have NVIDIA, who's definitely one of the bigger uh, risers uh, over this week had massive, massive order flow uh, all week. Uh, all week, we were even starting to see for, for this week and for the following week, they're coming for the 290s, they came for the 300s. You can see consolidation here right below the linear regression line. So, you know, good looking moves, right? Good looking potential. Look at Google, right? I mean, phenomenal, phenomenal looking chart. This is just basing above this whole daily supply. And again, the longer it stays above the daily supply. And here's kind of my point. You see how Google tested the five day moving average, right? You can see it a number of times, tested the five day moving average, trap shorts went higher, right? Test the five day trap higher, test the five day trap higher, test the five day trap higher, right? That's kind of what I wanna see with Tesla, but it doesn't make a difference right now. The longer the distribution, the higher probability moves, but that's the point. We're getting a lot of tech names that are going higher. Like for example, Thursday into Friday, uh, I usually don't do a Thursday night video, but I did one uh, this week just because uh, uh, my, my son had a, a training, a basketball training session on Tuesday, I couldn't record the video. But the whole point was I had a great game plan going into Friday and a lot of these stocks just kind of rested and that's okay, right? And that's okay. And as much as we need to trade, we want to trade, we're dying to trade. Let's, let's be honest. Anybody who's been trading for a very long time is not ever echoing that sentiment. It's all about preserving mental equity until these things actually wake up. But the most important part is we need to rest as traders, stocks need to uh, rest for um, structural balance. We all got that on Friday. And now the question is, do we extend this week? And again, after a 10% move on the NASDAQ 100, uh, just in the last two weeks, it's very, very important to get rest, right? Because again, we don't want even the, the most aggressive bull to turn around and say, yeah, yeah, yeah this is a way overbought on the short-term basis. We need this thing to now uh, to, to go low. We don't need that. So rest is absolutely good. Just like a human being needs water, stocks need rest. And the most important part is waiting for that next uh, leg higher. So going into this week, again, it, it, it's it's sometimes you don't you don't need to overthink things. Like I said uh, on Thursday's video, despite us resting on, um, despite us resting for um, for Friday, right? The most important thing we echoed is continued value, right? And just because a stock didn't go on Friday doesn't mean it's not going to go on Monday. Doesn't mean uh, it's not going to go on um, on Tuesday as well. So rest is good. And the most important part is don't overthink, right? Don't overthink, don't get creative. Most important thing is just wait, right? You don't need to trade every single day. You don't need to trade every single second. I get it, people are all over the place. This one's going higher, that one's going higher. That one and this one might not fit your investment style. That might not fit your, your trading style. So one man's garbage might be one man's treasure and vice versa. So for us, the most important thing is to wait wait for these stocks to come out of distribution, wait for these stocks to start confirming the previous weekly's channel and go with a, you know, go with uh, extreme uh, confidence, go with extreme prejudice, because again, the charts are there for you to stay safe and take advantage of price action. So let's talk about uh, some ideas that I like for this week. Obviously, uh, Amazon, Microsoft, Tesla, NVIDIA, they look great, right? They're just, just waiting for the next leg up. And then that goes for a lot of other tech stocks. If you go through the NASDAQ 100, you'll see a lot of the names just kind of resting. But there's some names, other names that look pretty good. Uh, look at GoDaddy, right? Uh, a little bit of a thinner name. But again, if you have patience with this trade, and obviously this thing is not gonna move like a Tesla, it's not gonna move like an Amazon, but if you're, if, you're, if you're very, very patient with a trade like this, look at the top of this channel here, right? This thing starts 
uh, building above the February channel. You know, this thing could start next leg up. Looks really good. Look at Coles, right? Not a name that I would usually look at, but the reason why you saw this really, really big candle in the middle of the day, there was private equity talk, right? And this thing has just kind of just flagged and flagged. And if you're a brand new trader, you know, draw that trend line, right? If you see, start seeing Coles take down this whole trend line here, take a look at it, man. If this thing never sold, off that private equity talk. As, as, as they say all the time, every rumor is just a premature fact. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but definitely it's something you should definitely watch uh, on your radar. And Intel, remember Intel? A lot of you guys said, who? What's the symbol, right? Intel was one of the biggest uh, leaders during the internet craze, right? Intel, Oracle, Cisco, Microsoft, right? These were all big daddies, right? These were these are the Teslas and Amazons of this generation. Um, this thing looks great. This thing is looks really close uh, to getting above the 200-day moving average. And again, if you could get above the 200-day moving average, well, that's that's the mother load of supply right now. Maybe it could start its next leg up. And if you look at all the semiconductors, a lot of them are going to look exactly the same thing. We talked about the LRCX, obviously we talked about NVIDIA. Clack looks good. AMD still looks really, really good. But the most important part are the names that are about to imminently take down supply. So again, market continues to be good till it's not. Research is there to protect you. Oil is still over 100. It's still at war. But the most important part is we are embracing it, that it's, it's part of life and we are moving forward as friends, as family members, as husbands, as wives, uh, as human beings. Guys, God bless you all. Stay safe, stay happy, and we'll all help. We'll see each other on Monday. Take care.